Welcome to this Tyrannus video. In this video, what we're going to do is configure the trainer system on the Tyrannus so that we can use this Spectrum DX7 as a slave radio for something like a student pilot. So the example would be, I would be flying the Tyrannus radio and I would have this connected by a simple cable and the student could have control of the model while I'm holding a switch and then I'd let go of that switch and then control would pass back to my master Tyrannus and I could carry on flying. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two radios together. We'll have a quick look at the, what we need to know on the Spectrum DX7 before we go onto the Tyrannus. Then we'll go onto the Tyrannus and plug it all together. Then we'll set up the trainer bits and pieces in here in the radio setup information. And we'll also assign a little switch at the back in the model memory so that I can allow the spectrum to be given control for a short time. We're going to finally just show it in action controlling something like a simple servo on a receiver, but it'll give you the idea. The only other thing you need apart from uh, both radios that can output DSC is a stereo cable. Now some radios are a bit funny and they require weird and wacky cables but this DX7 and Tyrannus work beautifully with a simple 3.5mm stereo jack. This is one I use for audio and it works beautifully for this setup. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll zoom in on our trusty DX7 and we'll have a look at how it's set up. So on this Spectrum radio, I already have a model set up that doesn't have any mixing or any of the smart, clever stuff that's designed for using with my Phoenix Flight Sim. And that's what I've used the majority of the time when I've been plugging a cable into this port that's marked DSC at the back. And that's where we're going to plug our cable in when we've set up. But for now, what we're going to do is just select that model. And the second thing we're going to do is also make sure we're clear on what the order of the channels are. So let me just power the radio on. I'm going to select the model that I created for Phoenix. There we are, that's my little model set up. So that has none of the excitement. And the only other thing we'll do then is we'll check what order the channels are. So if I just go through the menus, there is the monitor. And we can see that the throttle is the first one, then it goes throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. T-A-E-R. And we need to remember that because that needs to be programmed into the Tronus because not all radios output the channels in the same order for the trainer mode. So now we know it's T-A-E-R. I'm just going to make a note of that on a bit of paper. We can then plug it into the Tyrannus. So I would always recommend make sure that you have a model set up. I'd call it something like trainer. Just have it really default, standard throws, standard everything else. Because what we want to do is have the Tyrannus Master Radio do all the really smart stuff and the DX7 just to be here to be a secondary set of control inputs for the main four flight controls. So now we've done that, we can turn that off. We've done everything we need to with our DX7. To activate the trainer function on the DX7, all you have to do is plug the 3.5mm cable into that DSC port at the back. And what you'll notice is I have the radio off, but if I plug the cable into that port, the radio is powered on, and on the screen it actually says DSC Phoenix. So it's outputting the bits and pieces out down through the cable. So we know it's ready to work. I'm just going to unplug the cable for the DX7 for now because I don't want to run the battery down while we're doing the setup, but I think we are ready for the Tyrannus to do the other side. So on the Tyrannus, the first thing we need to do is actually set up the trainer function itself. Now to do that, we need to press and hold the menu button and that will take us into the radio setup. And this is a menu we haven't really looked at a lot in the series, but we did look at all these settings very briefly in the OpenTX companion. Now I'm going to click on page until I get down to the trainer. So here is the trainer menu and it's going to ask us where we want all of the settings for the throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. And down at the bottom there's something called a multiplier and then at the bottom we can calibrate the numbers too. But we'll get to that in a second. So if I hit enter first, I can set the throttle. Now there are three modes, either the trainer doesn't pass through the value, which it seems a bit pointless. It can actually be an additive value so that the value of both the Tyrannus and the radio for the student 
um, actually are added together or you can say replace which is what I'm going to set it to. Next thing we need to do then is to set how much of the value we want coming through. I'm obviously going to want 100% of the value from the DX7 to come into the radio, so I'm going to set it to 100%. We can actually have more value or less, but 100% makes sense. If you come into this for the first time, you'll probably find that that percentage value is down at nothing, so you have to just whack it up to 100 for every one. Now the next thing we need to do is set up the channel order. Now if we remember from our quick look at the DX7 just a moment ago, the first channel is throttle, so channel 1 is right, so we'll keep it there. Next thing we'll need to do then is go down to aileron. We will say we want to replace the aileron value, again 100%. This time the aileron is actually the second channel, so that works perfectly. Then we'll go down and we'll select the elevator to replace 100% weight elevator is channel 3 and then we'll go down replace the rudder value and again 100% and then this is channel 4 so now we've mapped the channels onto the DX7 and now it's not a bad idea to actually plug the other radio in and plug it into the DSC port at the back so I'm going to plug in my DX7 now off camera that little beep was the DSC kicking in. And now what I'm going to do is plug it into the DSC port, which is this one here. It's under the DSC label on the back of the Tyrannus. Okay, so here we are back on the radio. I've uh, just had to reorder this a little bit because obviously the cable is now stuck out the back. So what we can see, as I move the throttle on the DX7, watch this number on channel 1. It's going up and down. On channel 2, the aileron, we should see that value change. Fantastic. Then we have channel 3, which is hopefully our elevator. Wonderful. And then if I move the rudder, that should move the last one. Great. Now what we've noticed here is that we are just getting enough movement on the throttle. It's going from 97 down to 95.4 and that's what the multiplier does. By default it's 1.0 when you come in and on here that means that we're only getting 81 to minus 79% throw. That isn't quite enough. As you know on the Tyrannus it goes from minus 100 to plus 100 so we need to make sure that's the case. So what we'll do is we'll highlight that and we'll just increase it it could be 1.2, 1.3, but 1.2 will work. And now that's as pretty close to plus 100 and minus 100. If, however, we find that one of the channels is reversed when we're setting it up, we can go back up into one of these sources and actually change the polarity of one of the inputs so we can change it around and I'd always recommend if you're setting this up for the first time use it with a receiver that isn't connected to a model and then make sure that the control on the radio on and the control on the slave radio make the servo move in the same direction and if they don't come back and change it back here but what you can see is at the moment that I know that the throttle is working in the right way because down at the lowest position it's minus 95.4, up at the highest position it's 97. So that's pretty close to what the Tyrannus would be. Now we've done that, we're almost there. What we need to do as a last step is actually put each of the sticks in the center position, including the throttle on the DX7, and then go down and select calibrate and hit it once, and you'll see these numbers go to zero. And now we have everything zeroed out. So the throttle in its middle position with both hands off the other radio, it's reading absolute neutral. And as I move the controls, now they're going back to as close to zero as it's going to get. So that's most of it set up now. Be aware, occasionally you can have some weird stuff on the throttle. You might find that it won't quite center out just be double sure that you have a completely linear throttle curve on the source model. That's why I'd always recommend that you always start with a brand new model with nothing set, no wacky curves or anything. Let the Tyrannus radio do all that funky stuff. Right, last thing we need to do then is actually to assign this to a switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out of here. 
we are going to go into the model itself and this time we're going to go down into special functions and this time we're going to create a new special function the special function is going to be assigned to a switch for the demo I'll um, stick it on to SD at the bottom position and then what we'll do is we'll select trainer so hit enter we go down one and we, if we wanted to we could just pick at one of the individual channels if we're just trying to teach somebody about those but if you leave it blank you'll get all of them of course then we need to enable that mix so now when my top right hand switch D is down we should have trainer mode and it would be a good idea to maybe set up a nice voice alert to let us know that that's what was happening. Now we've done this, let me set up the bench and pull back and show you the system in action with a servo connected to the throttle channel and have that controlled by the student's radio and then tech control again back in the master radio. So let me just set that up and we'll come straight back. So here we have both radios configured. We have our DX7 on the left hand side with the cable coming out the bottom going all the way around the corner into the back of the Tyrannus. And at the front of the screen you can see it says DSC on the DX7 and also we have this <laughs> the timer's running. On the front of the Tyrannus you can see this little icon which looks like an M with an aerial at the end by the side of the volume. And that's showing again that it's got a signal and it's plugged in. Now the way this works is so long as my switch is in the position where the Tronus has control, it actually has control of the throttle channel. So here's a little D4R2 that we're bound to. I've plugged the servo into the throttle channel for the demo and there is our throttle working beautifully from our Tronus radio. If however we pop the switch into the position to give control to the slave or student radio, then now it's the DX7 that has control. And if you don't want to go to the trouble of plugging in a servo into each of the channels to double check that everything is all working and the polarity of the channels is right, another cute feature of this is if you go into this screen, which is part of the standard display, if you just pick, click page when you're actually looking at the display, you get this display here which shows the relative stick positions for all of the controls. And as I move the DX7, you'll see the control on the screen change on the Tyrannus. So there's my throttle movement, up and down. Minutes. My rudder movement, my elevator movement is perfect, but my aileron movement is back to front. So I could jump back into the trainer menu and go and reverse the mix value, because at the moment, if it's minus, it should be plus. If it's plus, it should be minus. And that's a really cute way for you to check very quickly that the slave radio is working perfectly. So at the moment, our slave radio is controlling the craft. If I switch back out of the mode, then that radio goes dead and the Tyrannus can take over. So that's it. That's how you set it up. Very simple and straightforward. Again, we're using an industry standard 3.5mm stereo jack cable into the back of the DX7 and the Tyrannus. So this, if you have a Spectrum set of radios that outputs DSC, then this is the way you can do it. So I know it works with DX7s, DX6i2. If you have another radio, you might need to have a look at what the cable type is. But hopefully that shows you the process, what you need to do to prep the radio that you're going to use for your slave, and then how you set everything up on the Tronus so that it acts as a master. Again, I'd always recommend for the switch, you use the spring-loaded switch at the back right-hand side. That way you can engage the switch, give control to the student pilot, and if they get into trouble, let go of that switch and let it spring back into its normal position, and then that gives you, as the tutor, control back of the craft to get it out of trouble. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.